I'm Michael Lawless, Clinical Associate Professor at the University of Sydney and Ophthalmic Surgeon at Vision Eye Institute in Chatswood and Bondi Junction. And I'm here to talk today about the cataract surgery, but particularly the lens choices with cataract surgery. Really? Do you need to hear about this? Well, it's a confusing area in the last five years or so for ophthalmologists. It's really confusing for patients and it's going to rebound on, on, on lots of different doctors who touch on people who've had cataract surgery or about to have it. The thing is this, cataract surgery is common and it's very successful in terms of its worth for society. It's incredibly cost effective and done at a younger and younger age group as the safety and accuracy of cataract surgery has got better, you can intervene earlier. And an aging population just means the, the demography rules and, and, and cataract surgery is increasingly done. The dilemma is this. Well, I'll put it this way. Here, here's the conversation that occurs. If I see a patient who's ready for cataract surgery, lots of nuances about when a person should have it and shouldn't have it, but say they're ready for cataract surgery. The conversation goes like this. I say to them, look, now there are, there, are, there are some choices to be made and there are two paths you can go down. Path one, with cataract surgery, I can put a lens in that has very clear optics and gives very clear vision. You don't have to adapt to it, it's just clear. And those lenses are good optically, but they're limited in their range. And so if I use that lens in you, I can give you very good distance vision without glasses, but you will need glasses for the computer and for reading and for near work. Now, some people say, nod and say, good, that sounds fine to me. I've worn glasses a lot or, or uh, that, um, that's what I want. And I said, well, you need to understand though, there's a second path. I can, in the second path, and it's not that my path one is right and path two is incorrect. They're, they're just different choices that you have to make. Path two is I can put a lens in, for example, called a trifocal lens. Now it's not three lenses, but it's called a trifocal lens. It's a lens with different powers and it tries to do more and it does do more. And if I put that lens in you, in both eyes, and I get everything right, the power of the lens is perfect and your tear film is good and the recovery is normal, with that lens you can be pretty certain that you will never wear glasses. Not for distance, not for computer, not for reading. You can be free of glasses. Now that lens is trying to do more and it comes at a, a little cost and you've got to be prepared to accept the cost. And it's two things. Firstly, it's guaranteed that that lens will give you a series of rings or sort of halos around lights at night. Not during the day, but at night when it's dark. And driving at night is a good example because you've got a light source coming at you and you get rings around it. If you're at a night football game, you get rings around the light sources and a little bit of glare from that. And that improves with time, but it never truly, it never really disappears completely. It's part of the lens design. The second thing is that some people in the first six months after surgery, they say to me, yeah, you know, I'm not wearing glasses. That's good. That's what you said. But you know, I don't think I see as clearly as I used to see or how I think I used to see with my best glasses. And there is some truth in that because there's an adaptation period where your brain works out how to use the lens. Now, in almost everybody, that improves to normal. It's perceived as very clear as months go on, but there's an adaptation period for some people. So there you've got two choices, path one and path two. The confusing bit now is it's no longer like that because there's a little middle path and there are a whole bunch of lenses called EDOF lenses. They stand for extended depth of focus. And what they're trying to do is be somewhere in between that really clear lens, good distance, wear reading glasses, and the trifocal, which gives you everything but some compromise. And the problem with EDOF lenses, there's many different classes of them. And if you ask an ophthalmologist, ophthalmologist won't be able to tell you all the classes because there's too many of them now. Some are going to be worthwhile, some are not going to prove to be worthwhile, but there are a lot on the market. And effectively what they're trying to do is give a little more range of vision so you're not so dependent on reading glasses, but with less of the halos around lights. Anything you do to extend the range does compromise the optics a little bit. So they're not, you should never promise too much with these lenses. 
but they are an intermediate type lens. And you can imagine where some people say, well, I, I, I don't mind wearing reading glasses, but I don't want to be dependent on them. I wouldn't mind having some reasonable vision here when I'm out and about. And so that can now be catered for with these eat off type lenses or a little bit of what's called mix and match. And so it's nice that there are choices, but there's an overwhelming number of choices for ophthalmologists. And as I mentioned at the beginning, let alone patients, to sort of grasp. And it's now up to ophthalmologists to, to not just do what we normally do, which is talk at patients, but to listen. And I spend a lot of time, well, for me, 10 minutes, listening to patients, trying to understand what matters most to them, rather than me telling them, listening to what really their life is like and what they want and what their personality is like, so I can then actually give them some reasonable advice. Because in the end, in the end an ophthalmologist has to give uh, good guidance. Not too dogmatic, but good guidance as to what is the right lens for that individual patient in front of us. So it's great that there are choices, but that choices come with a lot more discussion and they're nuanced choices, which just requires time and effort, but it's worthwhile. Thank you.